In today's video, I'm going to talk about scalp micropigmentation and how it can help people who are suffering from hair loss. There are a lot of methods to help hair loss, but today I want to highlight scalp micropigmentation as an alternative to hair products or treatments. Hi everyone, this is Julia from Pigmenta Permanent Cosmetics and welcome to my channel. The number one place for permanent makeup education science and inspiration if you're new to my channel please make sure that you click that subscribe button below hit the bell and turn on your notifications everything i mentioned in this video will be linked in the description box below so let's get started hair loss can have a real negative effect on the overall well-being as hair is a very necessary and important part of the daily routine but hair loss can also cause psychological damage and make us feel unattractive scalp micropigmentation also known as smp is a great alternative to many hair loss solutions that are available on the market. Probably the least known, although in the recent years, it has been more popular and available for people suffering from hair loss. Before I get into how we can help people with SMP, I want to dive into the science of hair growth and why we lose hair and commonly known treatments for hair loss. So please watch this video till the end so you can see how scalp micropigmentation can help. Why do we lose hair? Most likely it's genetics, the cuts that you were dealt with, and it's in your DNA. The medical name is androgenic alopecia, AGA, the partial or complete absence of hair from areas of the body where hair normally grows. In terms of scalp, both men and women can suffer from hair loss, commonly known as female pattern baldness or male pattern baldness. And besides, there are other factors for hair loss, such as people receiving medical treatments, fluctuations in hormones, childbirth, stress, autoimmune disorders, frontal fibrosis, alopecia, FFA, where the hair follicles are inflamed and scarring develops and in it its effect, the front of the hairline and sometimes the eyebrows will lose its hair. Or alopecia areata, AA, characterized by a circular hair loss in which the hair follicle is irreversibly damaged and even tick disorders such as motor tics like trichotillomania, which is a body-focused repetitive motion in which a person pulls their hair out on the top of the head or on the eyelashes or even eyebrows. And traction alopecia commonly occurs with corn rolls, tight ponytails, and dreadlocks. To understand hair loss, you have to learn the different types of hair growth cycles on the scalp, the androgen phase. In this phase, the hair is growing. This phase will last somewhere between three to six years, although with some exceptions, this period can be longer. Each individual will have a maximum length in which the hair can grow, and it depends primarily on the duration of the androgen phase. The older the person, the shorter the androgen growth phase. Women can grow longer hair, but men's hair grow faster. The catechin phase. This phase will last two to four weeks. In this phase, the keratinocytes of the hair root degenerate and hair growth comes to a halt. The hair root loses volume, moves slowly through the surface of the skin, and the connection to the hair papillae is severed, causing the hair to be shed. The telogen phase. This phase will last somewhere between three to four months. The hair falls out naturally due to the external influences such as washing hair or brushing hair or the pressure of a new root forming underneath the scalp. This is followed by a rest phase until the new cycle begins. So what happens when you lose your hair? Basically the AGA or the antigen slash telogen ratio is altered, meaning the telogen phase is prolonged and the antigen phase is shortened. At the same time, the hair bulb is destroyed and the hair shaft has collapsed. So what can you do to combat hair loss? Number one, hair growth products, usually over the counter, and the active ingredient is called minoxidil. The generic name is Rogaine and is applied directly to the scalp. It's considered a vasodilator. It's believed to work by partially enlarging the hair follicles and elongating the growth phase of the hair. With more follicles in the growth phase, you'll see more hair on the scalp. It's most effective for regrowth on the top of your head and on the crown, and it usually takes about four to six months to see improvements. It works for some people, and for others, it doesn't work. Number two, hair growth medications. This is prescription only, and the active ingredient is called finasteride, and the generic name is Propecia, and it's a pill that you take once a day. It's mainly used for stopping further hair loss across the entirety of your head, including receding hairlines. 
The drug works by lowering a level of a hormone that shrinks hair follicles called DHT. And it also takes about four months to take its effect. Number three, supplements. Various supplements are available over the counter. Some see success and some do not. Four, hair transplant. This involves transplanting hair follicles to one area of the head, which is called the donor area, to the area that needs it, which is usually the front, called the recipient area. It's a great option if done correctly and if you have the funds for it, as it can get very costly and not everybody can afford it. Typically, the hair that is programmed to forever grow, which is usually on the nape, is transplanted to the area that does not grow anymore. I have done a lot of men who have had hair transplants and really successful. However, since they're taking this from the nape of their head, they're left with sometimes one to three rolls of horizontal scars. And what I can do with SMP is I can just go into that scarred area and implant dots or lines, and then I can cover it up to make it look like hair. Five light therapy also referred to as red light therapy and code laser a low dose laser invigorates circulation and stimulation that encourages the hair follicles to grow hair in theory six prp platelet rich plasma is a newer therapy for hair loss in a three-step medical treatment in which the person's blood is drawn processed and then injected in the scalp the platelets one type of blood cells that contains growth factors that can trigger cell growth, speed healing, and stimulate tissue regeneration. However, this is a relatively new treatment and not enough research has been done to know the success rate. Seven, hair replacement systems, also called hair prosthetics or toupees. It's a popular method of hair replacement, but the cost and appearance of any given hair piece can vary widely based on the materials used and the level of craftsmanship in their creation. Hair pieces are often custom made for the individual and fitted, cut, and styled. The maintenance is about every four to eight weeks in which the hair piece is glued to the scalp with a medical grade glue. Eight, hair weave and extensions. This is ideal for people who have thinning hair and need volume or where the hair does not grow long enough. Anyone can wear hair extensions or weave if you have healthy hair. If your hair is compromised in any way due to some of the conditions that I previously mentioned, then that's not advisable as you can make the condition worse. In hair extensions, individual strands of hair is fused to the existing hair by the means of a chemical or mechanical bond. And in a weave, the hair is braided into a pattern and the weft is sewn into the braided hair. Nine, wigs or toppers. Instantly helps with covering hair loss problems. The modern type wigs or toppers have a lace front and it makes it all very seamless. This is a good method for people on a budget who do not want to spend the money either on medications or other more expensive hair solutions. 10. Powders and fibers. Designed to make hair fuller and thicker instantly. It forms a static electricity bond on the scalp and existing hair. Hair loss concealers can come in a spray or powder form. And lastly, let's get into the methods of scalp micropigmentation. We can help almost anyone with any of the conditions that I mentioned. Female pattern baldness, aka AGA. If it's the front area along the hairline or where the widow peaks are, we can actually mimic little hair strokes, which is like the baby hairs in the front with using the microblading method. The microblading can make this look so natural and undetectable. It blends really quite nicely. If the area is on the top of the head, we can do a series of dots and strokes to make sure we can cover a larger area where more density is desired. Traction alopecia usually affects the sides of the heads, like right here or even further inside. And it can be a result of cornrows, dreadlocks, or ponytails. Those areas might be thinned out or worse, it would be completely bald. We can decide to do either dots to fill it in, or also we can use microblading again to mimic hair strokes and fill in that area. Frontal fibrosis alopecia, FFA, and it's characterized by the hair follicles being inflamed. Often scarring develops and it affects really the front part of the scalp from the forehead all the way 
maybe to the top of the head, and it sometimes also affects the eyebrows. People who suffer from FFA can often lose uh, more than one or two inches in the front line and make the forehead look wider. The sooner the individual gets diagnosed with FFA, the better, as you can immediately intervene with medications. So usually the dermatologist would be the one seeing the patient and making that diagnosis. It could slow down the progression of the hair loss, or it can even stop it. Individuals who have been diagnosed with FFA most likely will come to a point of burnout or remission where the hair actually stops falling out. At that point, and only after the remission process has started, is when you can actually do scalp micropigmentation. Alopecia areata, AA, characterized by a circular patchy pattern on the scalp or any other place of the body. It can be persistent without ever developing into the intensive alopecia areata, which is areata totalis, AAT, which results in hair loss across the entire scalp and face, or alopecia universalis, AU. This type results in hair loss over the entire scalp, lashes, eyebrows, and all body hair, including pubic hair. With the mildest form of alopecia areata, you can use a series of dots and strokes to cover the area. For females with conditions um, such as AAT and AU, that would mean that they have lost the entire hair on the scalp. Those individuals would be better served with a wig and then they could do microblading for the eyebrows or tattooed eyeliner to mimic eyelashes. For male pattern baldness, SMP is a great tool. Um, they could actually have um, receding hairline or lose hair on the top or lose hair on the crown or have the entire horseshoe um, whereas we can do tiny little dots to mimic a shaved look. But it's important to inform them that um, they might have to commit to a hairstyle that would fit that type of tattoo. And for thinning hair and receding hairlines, we can again do a series of dots and microblading. Although if the projection is total hair loss on the top or on the crown, then we would advise to wait until such point and then perhaps do SMP on the entire scalp. And then lastly, as I mentioned before, um, we can tattoo the back of the nape if they've had hair transplants to just mask it. Um, this will allow them to actually wear the hair slightly shorter because in order to mask it, often men will, or women for that matter, will do some kind of a comb over, let the hair grow longer so it can cover the tracks. So what's involved in getting SMP? Depending on the area, it can take one to six treatments. The best thing to do is actually go for a consultation. The professional can actually look at the areas of concern and determine the correct treatment plan. Patience is needed as it can take multiple treatments and it can be lengthy since you have to wait about a month in between treatments. There's certain aftercare involved. Just make sure that it can fit into your lifestyle and your social schedule can accommodate it. The cost for SMP is determined by your demographics, but also by the area being treated. So if you have just one little bald spot over here, one treatment is enough and the cost is low. But if you have to do an entire top of the head or the entire head, then of course it requires again multiple treatments and the cost is much higher. I hope this helped you in understanding hair loss and what you can actually do about it. If you have any questions regarding SMP, please contact us at pigmentausa.com or tell me in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you soon.